Welcome to What the F***. I'm your host, Jim Two, a.k.a. the Sunnyville Streaker. Okay, so we don't have Timothy Walton in our legal department tonight, so I guess we'll just have to get meet uh, something. Well, what are we doing tonight? Oh, yeah. Let's meet tonight's panel. Voted the best-looking TV panel by Oprah's Braille Book of the Month Club. In the far chair, she's cuter than two kittens reenacting the two girls in a cup video. It's library worker Jenna Christ. In the middle chair, it's international woman of intrigue Cynthia Gregory. She's so mysterious, Scooby-Doo and the gang has renamed the mystery machine to Cynthia. In between them, it's attorney at law Mel Patterson. If brilliant legal arguments were gavels, judges would bang him all day long. <laughs> Finally, sitting next to me, he's the host of KMBT's only live show. John wants answers. It's John Vink. If penetrating questions was a bathhouse, anonymous men would come inside of him. <laughs> Issue number one. Does it make one ponder if distance makes the heart grow fonder? A study by David M. Frost of Columbia University School of Public Health has a new study which finds that when it comes to having a lasting and fulfilling relationship, it's not how close you feel that matters most, it's whether you feel as close as you want to be, even if it's not that really that close at all. In a survey of 732 men and women, he found that the gap between actual uh, and ideal intimacy, their closeness discrepancy, correlated with poor relationship quality and more frequent symptoms of depression. You know who doesn't have that problem? This guy. Yeah, and that's how the Aflac duck got its that's training. Right. That's right. <laughs> you know, they got injured. There you go. All right, hey Jenna. Uh, emotionally distant, uh, g as good as good or bad. Are you buying this? Well, they're saying that people have to match up on what they want. So either two distant people or two closey close people, and that makes sense. I mean, like there's so many different spots at which you and your spouse can, you know, have friction, and so it's. You need to match up in the various areas. So it makes sense. So if you have a couple and they both want to be emotionally distant from each other, they, they can possibly have a happy marriage? Exactly. Okay. <laughs> know anybody like that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if they've told me. <laughs> well, no, I mean, uh, yeah, but yeah, but I know they won't tell you that, hey, yeah, Jenna, we have a... But we are so emotionally we're distant. We're so we're distant. We're so happy about it. <laughs> but based on your observation, do you, know of any, do you know of any couples that are emotionally distant and happy with it? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Usually it's like one person's distant and one person is like wanting more. Oh, okay. So. All right, so is that the reason why most couples are miserable? <laughs> One of many. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. <laughs> Cynthia, as an international woman of intrigue, uh, I assume men, most of your relationships are distant. So, it, uh, what's your take on this? It, yes, emotionally distant and physically distant, and that's just exactly the way I like it. I find that you know, um, it, if I were actually in a relationship, um, I would want uh, or and wanted to have a long-term committed relationship. I think it would work best if the guy lived next door or down the street. Okay. So yeah, I think I think I can kind of get behind this, you know. Okay. Is, 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 is <laughs> Next door and down the street, consider long distance for you. It's it's well, it's probably close enough if I really need something like you know the something pulled off the top shelf or something heavy moved like the sofa moved from that side of the room to the other side of the room. And yeah. the cup of sugar, cup of sugar, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Is, is, is cup of sugar a <laughs> euphemism for walk of shame? <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, I don't think that one would be a walk of shame because oh, okay. I don't know that I would ask for a cup of sugar early in the morning. You never know, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Hey Mel, I mean your 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 ideal distance distant relationship is is defined by the restraining order. So what's your take <laughs> on right. this? That's right. You know, I, you know, I, I'm usually happier the further away my spouse is. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to go. Get married. And you have, and you have a court order to make that makes enforces well, that she distance. Does. Oh, she does. <laughs> what's the distance? Well, 500 miles usually. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, Mel, how do you reach out and touch someone then? <laughs> Much difficulty. You know? Okay, all right. Usually it's himself he's reaching out to touch. <laughs> oh, it, well, that's oh. not that long. <laughs> hey, John, you're a married man, right? I'm a married man, I say. What's your take on this? 
Um, I know people who are in relationships, and uh, the guy, for example, feels uh, pretty smothered. Right. So he wants it to be farther apart than the woman does, and they wouldn't want to be, want to be closer. Right. So uh, definitely, they got problems. Okay. So you you at least buy the emo the, the intimacy discrepancy oh, yeah, part, totally. right? Oh, for sure. But do you buy the we can be perfectly happy if we if we both as di if we're both distant? Yes. Okay. Do you know any of anybody that like that? No. No. Okay. All right. I don't pull my friends. See how close they are. Again, I, I assume you don't ask. You just observe. Yeah. You, you haven't observed any couples that are emotionally distant and seem happy, right? I don't know. Keith, are you. Uh, are you <laughs> hey, leave the cameraman alone here. He's working there. He's working there. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'll throw this out to the table. Um, if, is, I assume most of you guys seem to buy this, but uh, is this an, uh, a, an observation of the obvious or is this a profound observation? I can't believe they have studies about this stuff. Right. This is the obvious, right? Yeah, to you, it's obvious. Yeah. Okay. Does that does it seem obvious to you guys? Yeah, it seems obvious. Absolutely. Even though none of you, other than Mel, knows of a couple that are emotionally distant and happy, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about emotionally distant, but I do know couples that, I don't know, they like spending time apart. You know, they have their own f friend groups. And so, whereas other ones, you know, they're always together. So, it kind of seems like this. They have they have their own lives other than their significant other. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then so all right then then can we, then here's the here's a follow up question to again I'll throw it out to the group. Uh, feel free to pipe up. Uh, can we control the amount of closeness that we want? Not that we can actually get, but what we want. Well, with a petition to the court. <laughs> <laughs> again, Mel, with the restraining orders, but. Uh, <laughs> Always going back to the restraining Always going back to the restraining orders, right, Mel? That's okay. Right, yeah. But uh, can, you, if, can you condition yourself to accept the amount of closeness you actually get, even if it's not what you want initially? I guess it depends on how um, masochistic, you, masochistic you are. So if you really desire something but you can't have it, then it's going to cause some kind of pain, but you have to be willing to accept it. Right. So maybe you have to have a little bit of that masochism to make it work. Do you have it? Uh, oh, apparently. Oh, do you? Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. So. <laughs> is this is this why you only want the guy next door? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, or down the street. Or down the street. Maybe, maybe down the block would be better. Yeah. <laughs> Br bring the leather implements quickly. <laughs> All right. Okay. We're on to our next. From intimate distance <laughs> to friends with benefits. Issue number two: Is the relationship platonic if the motive is romantic? An article in the Journal of Social and Personal Relationships, by the way, the most read magazine in the KMBT newsroom, <laughs> concludes that women are more likely to consider their friendships with men as platonic and only hope that they develop into more if their relationship is in trouble. While men, whether they are attached or single, were more likely to harbor an attraction to their female friends and would want to go out with them. I assume go out means just have coffee and listen to it, have an engaging conversation, right? Uh -huh. Anyways, uh, for more, we turn to our easily aroused religion correspondent. What's happening right now? Right now. Uh, there, a hand. Is it burning or, or just a hand? Just feel it. You think it's Jesus? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Boom. Bye. Finish it, Lord. Looks like a Taylor Swift. Yeah, you know, uh, you know. I think the title of that video is Jesus Orgasm or Finger Bang by Jesus, but uh, who knows? But the, Ew. I, I never trust a, a preacher with a visible tattoo. You know, that just kind of creeps me out. But uh, all right, um, let's see here. Men's friendships with women driven by sexual attraction. I guess I should start with one of the men. Mel, you have a lot of female friends. You buying this or not? Absolutely. There's no such thing as, as platonic relationships with men. <laughs> so secretly, you want to bang all your female friends? Secretly. Oh. <laughs> well, they certainly know now. Uh, Jedi, you better. Tur I don't know if you accepted his friend request on Facebook yet. But, uh, I mean, where, where do I go to get the restraining order? I, I'm unfriending you. <laughs> so you're buying this. So, see, oh, yeah. so, so there's yeah. no such. So Harry, when Harry met Sally, Harry was right. Yeah, he okay. absolutely <laughs> was. Okay. You can't think of one female friend of yours that you don't want to sleep with. <laughs> I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> Ugly ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Cynthia, you buying this or not? Well, first I want to ask, is, who's doing these studies? Is it <laughs> is Homer Simpson behind them? Because these are the most obvious studies ever. 
<laughs> Obviously, you're, you, you don't have a PhD. Oh, I guess, no, I do not. I always said if I needed a PhD, I'd hire one. Right, 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 but, right. Uh, <laughs> but yes, I actually believe this is a, uh, a fairly well-known truth. I don't believe a guy can just be a friend with a girl. Uh, do you have any male friends? I have plenty of male friends. I know what they're all up to. And, 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 they, and they all want to get in your pants. <laughs> um, there you go. Well, you know, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, um, I'm a little worried because all the guys that want to friend me on Facebook either look like serial killers or, or, or pedophiles. So now I'm a little worried. So, but you know, they're, 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 you know they're not pedophiles. If this study is true, you know they're not pedophiles, well, right? All right, sexual offenders, maybe. Yeah, there you go. There so you at go. least that's what their pictures look like to me. <laughs> Big mustaches, yeah. unibomber, yeah. Jenna, yeah. glasses, yeah. Yeah. Jenna, you have a lot of male friends, right? Sure. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you buying this? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> you, may, you, you, you hope that they all don't find you sexually attractive? Is that it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Because remember, that's a double-edged sword there. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if I want this. <laughs> that's what she said? It is. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. So, but, but if it's true, would that, would that affect your friendship with all your male friends? Uh, I, I'm going to go into the denial land. All right. So. If your husband knows it, well, would he let you hang out with your male friends then without, without him present and a let shotgun? Let me? What? Let me? <laughs> what kind of relationship do you think we have? He doesn't emotionally distant. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> well, do, well, do you hang out with your male friends outside the presence of your husband? Yeah. Okay, now, but now that you know, if you believe that this study is true, will that affect that practice? We won't be going out to candlelit dinners or anything, that's for sure. Not that we were before. I mean... Okay, do I want to know what I don't, you guys are I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> John. Awkward yes. land. You have female friends, right? You know, I, after I read this article, I was thinking about my female friends. And right. <laughs> Both of them? The only female friends I have are like friends from high school. Like, I don't have any current female friends anymore. You don't have any female friends well, at all? That's because you're fantasizing about them. <laughs> <laughs> they cut on to me, maybe. Um, no, all my friends are guy friends. Okay, so you don't have this problem. I do not currently experience this problem, I suppose. Okay. Well, so I believe it's true. All right. You believe it's true? Yeah. Oh. Back when I had the female friends. Oh, okay. <laughs> you you got you. All right. All right. I think we are at the end of the segment, so you get to skate. Hey, by the way, can you make biodiesel from, from human fat that's been liposuctioned? John Bink will tell us at the end of the next break. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> what do you mean you guys aren't my friends? Oh, wait, oh, we're back. <laughs> Issue number three is cheating not a thing if you're allowed to swing. Researchers who were clearly born after the 1970s have studied a new form of relationships, polyamory. Now coined as, quote, consensually non-monogamous relationships. Try saying that five times fast. Researchers speculate that the lessons learned in these alternative arrangements may hold lessons for the monogamous couples in society. There's so few. Uh, people in these relationships really communicate. They communicate to death, unquote, said one researcher. Honesty, openness, and communication are the cornerstones for a polyamorous relationship regardless of the type. We're weird, those polyamorous people. Uh, let's see here. It also shows, studies show that polyamorous individuals are also well-educated, holding more master's and doctoral degrees than the general population. For more, we turn to Frank the Bongo Drummer, who we took away his bongo drum, so he at least give us a comment. Frank, your thoughts? that happened in the green room while I'm trying to get Skype to work on this. <laughs> uh, which one of you ladies was the bass drum and the, and the bass drum? Uh, <laughs> no, don't have to answer that. Don't worry. I, I prefer to be mean, blissfully ignorant. Uh, hey, Bell. Yep. Uh, you buying this? Uh, that the yeah, polyamory may be, good, may be good for you? Well, didn't you say that that um, the study said that that they these couples or these groups communicate to death? Yes. Well, 
If I communicated this to my wife, that would be the death of me. <laughs> I, I assure you. Yes, but that's then you wouldn't. You, you're not polyamorous. That's are you? right. Yeah, you you wouldn't. I would like to be polyamorous. Really? Yeah. So you're okay with your wife swinging? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You share your yeah. wife with other yeah. other dudes? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and, and it's the trade-off. It's the trade-off. It, oh, okay. It's yeah. a, it's a two-way street. Yeah. Okay. Oh wow, Mel. That's uh, I didn't I didn't really expect that. Would you your, you, would your wife be okay with that? No, that's what I'm telling you. She would not. That's that's why she, it would be uh -huh. the death of me if I proposed it. Of course, that would be the end of me. Oh, okay. John. Yes. What's your thought on this? Um, this lifestyle would not be for me. Okay, you, you you're a one woman man. Yes. It's a woman, right? One woman man. <laughs> right. And very much want my woman to be a one man man. One no. One. <laughs> <laughs> one man, I thought you said you wanted your woman to be a man. But Try that one more time. Put your teeth back in. Some reveal here. Yeah. <laughs> you only want your husband to be with you. <laughs> yeah, my wife can only be with me. And only and you. I only want to be with her. That's good. Okay, yeah. so so you're you're a square. You're, I'm a square. You're, I'm a nerd. You're a square. You're 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 you're, you're not a hip cat. Um. I've never been accused of being hip. Okay, there you go. Right. Or hep. Or hep. Or hep. Or hep. <laughs> or I have no hep. See, I always have no hep C. There you go. Because I'm not doing the polyamorous. <laughs> oh, there you go. Jenna, how about you? You buying this or not? Well, I guess the only people that could be in poly relationships would have to be ones that could communicate well. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in the relationships anymore. You mean for all the poor, you mean honesty and blah, blah, blah. You know, th those aren't the cornerstones of, of a monogamous relationship? That's a good point. <laughs> or, or is it just denial and, and anger and jealousy are the cornerstones of a monogamous and relationship? And despair. Despair of a monogamous relationship. There you go. Yeah, that's us. <laughs> Raise your hand. But, uh, Not for me. But, well, but knowing this, uh, does that, does that, does that uh, give you any reflection on the previous issue of whether or not men's friendships with women are driven by sexual attraction? Do you think if we had polyamory, that, that would help the friendship thing? It's a call to callback. <laughs> that's, that's all the friends would want to be with? There you go. The right. friends are the, the ones you hope to be poly with. There you go. No? You're not buying that, right? Sure. I mean, clearly, they like them, they hang out with them, they go to coffee with them, they're attracted to them, so if they could jump their bones, they would. There you go. All right, Cynthia. Uh, yeah, would you, would you do would polyamory? Would you, would you, would that... Yeah. Would you would it work for me? Yeah, Can I help you with would that? Would it work for you? So, um, actually, I don't think I'm smart enough because they did say that this was only for people who had really high IQs, and um, you know, mine's only 80. So oh. I just don't think that this would work for me at all. Even as an international woman of intrigue. Even as an international woman of intrigue, it's just not going to work. Okay. So you know, I uh, I don't like to share. I think that's the real core of my problem. Ah, there you so, go. Oh, you, you don't know, like to share. I don't like to share. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're in the set, in the segment from swinging to bringing. And let's see here. Oh, issue number four. Do the lady swoon even though he comes so soon? College sophomore Kyle McCabe has come up with a novel way of making money while in school. He delivers condoms to fellow students at the College of New Jersey in Ewing Township in person, sometimes wearing a large flashing blue siren on his head. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Classmates can place their order at his website and can pick from a variety of condom types and Flavors. Did I say flavors? <laughs> and can also dis select the discrete delivery option where he shows up without the large siren on his head. So, how's the service? We asked one of his best customers. Wow, that is one big condom. <laughs> Whenever he says, oh, those things are too small. <laughs> Apparently, you can get the blue one too. Right. I wonder if it glows in the dark. <clears throat> hey, uh, let's see here, um, John. Yes. Uh, let's see, uh, personal deliver, personal instant del condom delivery service. Good idea or best idea ever? I feel really, I don't know, bad left out because when I was in my college <laughs> days, at no point did I need an emergency condom delivery, and I don't know why people don't plan ahead. Right. I mean, I think in colleges, usually there's a big you know, fishbowl full of free condoms to take at any time. So I don't know why they find themselves without condoms. Well, no, let's say you're in your room and you're about to, you know, yeah. and then you realize you you don't have any. Are you going to run on down and pick up from the bowl or you're just going to hope someone just, you know, free delivery, right? You could pick up a pizza or you can have one delivered to you, right? Same yeah. with thing with condoms. Well, it also, like, draws attention to the pizza whole thing. And condoms. Right. Like, this guy's knocking at the door and he's saying, hey, I'm condom ambulance guy. <laughs> And hey, you two are going to get along. Woohoo! 
I don't think the the, the woman would feel in the mood. Is after that, all that? Is that how pizzas get delivered to you? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Domino's. Here's your pizza. Yeah. Yeah, God. but no one looks in the door going, "Hey, there you go." Hey, you're eating a pizza. Eating, right, no one, at least not in my place. Well, in a dorm room, it definitely cause attention. Well, okay, but uh, so so you you don't think this is a good idea at all? Well, if he's making money, it's a good idea. Okay. I'm all for capitalism. All right. I just don't see myself partaking needing this service. Well, you're married now, right? Yeah. Okay, you, and hopefully you think you plan ahead. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, he's married. He's probably yeah. not having sex and, anymore. And you're not polyamorous, <laughs> so you, you don't have to get multiple sets, right? Yeah, I'm all set with what I have. There you go. <laughs> okay. So, Mel, great idea, bad idea. I love American ingenuity. You can invest I in them? I, I certainly would. This is an aw awesome idea. Um, I, I can put myself in, in, in the position of a customer and, and actually see myself using this service. Would you, be, would you franchise? I would. would you I absolutely would. I mean, I think this is a great idea. So you're going to try to get the Berkeley franchise, right? <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Okay. Possibly. All yeah. right. So, uh, so this is for the ladies then. Uh, do you guys think that the, uh, the ladies use a service or men use a service more? Well, I, I think probably the women are going to have to call because, mm -hmm. you know, for, and I'm not sure how they're going to do that because in one hand they're going to have get over here with what I need while they're doing this with the guy <laughs> going, okay, honey, just five more minutes. Just hold off five more minutes. I don't know if their women are going to have to hold like hold up in the bathroom until the delivery comes, you know. Whip in a chair. Smart yeah, maybe that would work. <laughs> you, you, you know what? You know what will get a guy to wait? Just talk about your feelings. Uh, <laughs> that might kill the mood. <laughs> Don't worry, you just got to be able to, you know, learn, learn to shift your, learn to shift your man's emotional distance. <laughs> just don't use the M word. That was the best thing ever. The Jenna, video. You like the video? Flashing light. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, you, would you use this, Jenna? Sure, for laughs. It'd for, be for, fun. You know, be like, let's let's wait till let's the make people goes, think. <laughs> would you tip them? Uh, sure. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What would you tip him? <laughs> Pollyanna. <laughs> Pollyanna. <laughs> what would you tip Here's the fiber. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Good speedy delivery. Okay, here's, I'll throw this out because we have 30 seconds. I think we have like 20 seconds left. You think you get funding under Obamacare? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can make that work. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I can, I can. You think Sandra Fluck, Fluck likes him? Yeah. <laughs> nah, probably not. Yeah, I'm just like, okay, all right. <laughs> Okay, on to our second break. Okay, we are back from our second break. Now, since for some reason we Skype did not want to work today, I think I might have pissed Skype off by calling him the mama's boy. Uh, we'll, we'll, we're we're going to do the discard pile. These are stories we considered talking about on the show, but we didn't because we picked something else. So, first story, um, marriage weight gain. Uh, people gain weight after they get married, and the article discusses why. Uh, what do you uh, say, Mel? You're married, right? <laughs> what do you think about this? What do you think about this article? Well, it's obviously true, isn't it? <laughs> right. Why do you think people gain weight after they get married? Well, in my case, it was just laziness. All right. You know? Laziness how? Well, I didn't have to go out and eat, you know, and, and run back and forth to the fast food place. Of, you know, my kitchen became the fast food place, so I got fast food after, my, after I got married. Well, 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 so wait a minute. So after you got married, you stopped... Going to fast food places, yes. right? You ate at home. Yes. So fast food is healthier than if you go no, out. No, home food at home is healthier than fast food, right? Not necessarily. Uh, not the way my wife cooks. Oh. <laughs> Did your wife watch these? <laughs> watch these shows? <laughs> she might start entertaining the polyamory thing. <laughs> That's there. right. It's like, uh, That's That's all right. Why. So, so your thing is you're eating more home cooked meals, therefore you gain weight. I'm eating more home cooked meals in front of the TV. I don't actually have to run down to the Burger King and run back. Because running down to the Burger King burns burns your calories it, for it you. It burns enough of calories and to, to break them. even. I yeah, thought you and were, I do run. I thought you I were drive through kind of guy, Mel. <laughs> oh no, no, no! You can you can run down to Burger. I'm too cheap to pay for gas. Oh, you know? that's right, yeah. <laughs> Jenna. You buying that? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, what is your wife cooking? <laughs> Yeah. So do you? So uh, yeah, do you agree that after you get married, you gain weight? It could be. I don't know. All right. Sure. All right. Do, uh, <laughs> what is your What is your speculation on why? Um, you don't have to hook them in anymore. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're not going to the gym, and you know, look how hot I am. <laughs> 
<laughs> you already got him. <laughs> so is that it? You you already got your man. So who are you trying to impress? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> oh, God. I'm sorry. That actually might be true. I just didn't expect the very person to say that. <laughs> Cynthia? Well, I can tell you, as soon as I filed for divorce, I lost 25 pounds. So right. there so there must be something to it. <laughs> all right. So, okay. So you, you agree, you, do you agree with this after you get married? Yeah, I watched it happen to all my friends. As soon as they got married, there was the, you know, within about five years, they'd each put on about 20 pounds. You could see it. They were settled. They were happy. Right. They didn't have to impress anybody. They were. Um, they became more sedentary for some damn reason. Right. And even if they had kids, it was hard to get rid of their le- weight. Even after they had kids, you'd fig- figure they'd be chasing them around. But okay. it didn't work. Everybody's gotten fatter. It's just not fair. Okay. Well. Oh, well. So. It, okay. So. So. But is this is this observation that you gain weight after you get married? Is that like? Is this again? The observation of duh, the obvious, yes. or a mo- very profound uh, observation. Yet, yet another one done by Homer Simpson. Simpson there you I'm go. pretty sure. Did not need to be done for this. Yeah, right. there you go. Yeah, I knew this. Well, yeah. John, you're 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 a thin guy. Were you a skinnier guy before you got married, or I was after? Even skinnier. You're even skinnier. So I'm I'm you know pretty skinny now, but I was dangerously thin. Okay. It, yeah. Are you like Mel? Is it because of the home cooked meals? No, that's not the reason why. Okay. Or is it because like Jenna, you just gave up trying to attract a woman? And just thinking, I got, I got, I, she can't leave me now. Um, I think I actually eat out more than I did when I was single. Okay. It, um, and so I gain weight that way. Okay. I think when I eat out, I don't go to fast food, but when yeah. I eat out, it's not as healthy. Has marriage contributed to you eating out more? No, I just think it's the work hours. Okay. I just happen to have. Or is it could be? It could, okay. Could it be the fact that we all just got older, and that you know, as we get older, we tend to gain weight unless. I we, hate that story. I, I hate that fact. I it's know. true, but That's I hate true. it. All right, we got a minute left, so let's see here. Uh, oh, I should have saved this one for uh, for Frankie. Human robot relations. Why we should worry? <laughs> should we worry about human robot relations? I'll throw it out to the group. For 30 seconds. <clears throat> Only if you love your robot. Do you love your robot? No. Uh, how you love your robot, that's the problem. How, <laughs> yes, how, how you love your Could this robot. be a replacement for polyamory? <laughs> that's, that's what I was <laughs> talking about. It's a possibility. <laughs> all right. At a little beeper a tells me I'm simple. out of time. So uh, thank you for watching the show. For all of us, you want to send comments or snide remarks, our contact information is below on Facebook, Twitter, and email. Otherwise, later.